I, 32 female, met my sister-in-law Mary, 32 female, in uni. We were assigned flatmates who really enjoyed cooking and baking together and became best friends. She actually introduced me to her brother John, 35, whom I dated and eventually married eight years ago. We have two kids, a toddler and a kindergartner. Mary was thrilled for us. She had a close relationship with John and remained best friends with me. John is very intelligent and a bit competitive in nature, so he naturally went into an intense career field. Unfortunately, he turned to alcohol to cope with his intense job. He started seeing a therapist who helped him identify his triggers. He drank less and then he quit therapy, thinking he was fixed. He started it again after a while. He did the find a therapist, control his problem, quit therapy process four times over five years. Each time, he'd make promises and agreements. We had two kids along the way, the first before I realized how serious the problem was, and the second after he agreed to quit completely and get fully sober. He went back on that promise and said he wanted to be in control and only have one or two drinks a week. He never got completely sober. He'd flake out on promises to the kids and me. He'd go out with friends who encouraged him to drink and have two or three drinks and then start buying bottles of vodka and gin again. Finally, after the third time he quit therapy, I gave him an ultimatum get sober or I was leaving him and taking the kids. I followed through with it. Mary and I stayed best friends after college, but John asked me to keep his secret from his sister the first time and didn't want her to think he had a problem. He was my husband, so I agreed if he worked on staying sober. When I divorced him, it appeared out of the blue to Mary and their parents, who couldn't understand why I would up and leave their brother and adamantly take the kids, only letting him have visitation. Mary blamed me for the divorce and wanted to end our friendship, so I told her the truth, that I loved him and still do. Still, I wasn't willing to spend the rest of my life and ruin my kid's childhood, setting ourselves up for disappointment over and over again when he wouldn't stay in therapy or stay sober. Mary was horrified after I told her about everything. She got very emotional when I admitted to her how I often let myself get excited about plans her brother made with the kids or me, only to be flaked on when her brother poured himself a drink after work. She went to give John a piece of her mind and asked him to get his act together. John's now extremely upset at me for spilling his secret that I'd promised to keep because Mary's image of him is now rubbish and his parents are disappointed in him too. I think I had a right to explain myself to my best friend and I no longer had the promise to keep after he broke his end of it. Am I the idiot? You are not the idiot. What did your ex-husband expect? That you would take the blame for the divorce that happened because of his actions? To keep his reputation clean? What has he done to deserve that? No, you shouldn't be expected to keep such a secret on his behalf. Keeping his secret is a form of enabling. It hurts everyone involved. You did nothing wrong and may give him a nudge to seek actual sobriety. I truly hope your husband finds his way to real sobriety, but you cannot make him be if he is not ready. You have to take care of yourself and your family. Oh no, the consequences of his actions. He thinks everyone else needs to sacrifice for his actions. Truth is truth. No, he does not get to manipulate and shame you after years of broken promises. You did not deserve to lose a friend over the consequences your ex-husband chose. He's upset he was caught. Of course, Mary's opinion of him is rubbish. His behavior is rubbish. I hope he cleans up someday. Until then, best of luck to you and the kids. Was his drinking actually detrimental to your family dynamic in a significant way, or did you just not like the fact that he drank to begin with? I know a lot of people who have a drink after a stressful day of work, and I also know a lot of people who can handle their stuff and don't immediately turn into vile monsters when they have a few. If you're the one with this issue and his behavior was otherwise fine besides having a drink after work, you are the idiot. You should have been more supportive of your husband. I'm a 21-year-old female who recently welcomed my own child into the world, and I've been pretty emotional since. My mother always encouraged me to express myself and be independent and got me into things like art and swimming. We were super close. My dad wasn't amazing towards my mother. He decided who she saw, what she ate, and how she dressed, but they separated when I was 12, and his behavior didn't change how he treated me because he was a great dad. Until I was 16 and he passed away, he was still trying to rekindle his relationship with my mother and improving via therapy. I know it wasn't her job to forgive him, but my dad fully believed she was his soulmate and up until his death, he was apologizing and trying to get better for her. Four years ago, my mother got with Candice and came out as bi. 
She said her parents wouldn't have accepted her, but now she has nobody to hide from. I would have accepted it, but then two years ago they had a son and they're talking about another child. I did ask my mother if she felt a little old to be bringing another child into this world younger than her granddaughter, and she said, in front of my husband and in-laws, that you're never too old when you're with your soulmate. I did get upset. I said that it's a little insensitive when she never considered my father her soulmate. Considering everything, he always tried to get better for her, to support her, and even if she didn't believe that, she shouldn't have said that in front of her child. Especially when she's been with Candice for four years versus her first love, the 15 years she was with my dad. She went silent and the meal was awkward. My husband apologized on my behalf and I told him not to. My mother's new partner called me a massive narcissistic idiot and left. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot, so your mom is supposed to just forget that your dad treated her like a pile of dog crap he had the misfortune of stepping in just because your dad finally got his act together? He was controlling and abusive and only walked that behavior back when he realized your mom wasn't bluffing about leaving him in the rear view. That's not a soulmate. You acknowledge that your dad was abusive to your mother, but you're bitter that she finally found someone who truly makes her happy? What the heck is your problem? Let me tell you something, she doesn't owe your dad crap, okay? She is happy now and has found her soulmate, and if you can't be happy for her, then that's too bad for you. But you don't get to make her feel bad for it. Wow, you owe your mom an apology. I'm surprised she resisted all those years with him. She probably did it for you. She was probably afraid that your dad would manipulate you, which he did. With all the, I'm trying to be better for her, but she won't take me back. Laying the blame at her feet instead of admitting his own fault. And more importantly, not putting you in the middle of their problems. Your mother deserves to be happy and be with someone who loves and respects her. I have a feeling that living with your dad was much worse than you describe which sounds bad enough as it is. Grow up. My 50 female daughter, teen, has always had bad period pains, but has always been one to over-exaggerate her pain and she has low pain tolerance. She's been on birth control for about three and a half years to deal with this. This past week, she's been complaining about having severe pains. She said it had been on and off for about a week. However, she says the past 36 hours have been non-stop unbearable pain and she's been crying about the pain. She spent most of her school day in sick bay with a heat pack and Panadol. I told her I would try to book a doctor's appointment. Still, the first one I could get for her outside of school hours, she's not missing school for something as trivial as period pain, was 11 days away. She claims that will be useless to her, but I don't know what she wants me to do. I try giving her a heat pack, but she claims they're useless and don't do anything for her. I don't know what she wants me to do, and she's been angry with me all afternoon barely speaking to me and only grumbling answers or just yelling at me. So, am I the idiot for not doing anything? You are the idiot. I didn't even need to read the whole thing. As soon as you defined her pain for her and brushed it off as low pain tolerance, you became the idiot. How do you know what it feels like to be her? Poor girl is having her pain dismissed because you think you know best. The misogyny is coming from inside the matriarch. Poor daughter. OMG, are you serious? Your daughter has been crying in unbearable pain for three days. Take her to the doctor or urgent care. This is neglect. Stop being an idiot and get your kid to see a doctor, even during school hours. She is missing school by spending them in sick bay. Taking her to the doc will likely make this absence shorter if that's what you're worried about. Please do not assume that this is inconsequential. She needs help. I can assure you that this level is not normal. She could be having a medical emergency, but you're wasting time asking strangers on the internet for parenting advice. Come on, man. She could have ovarian cysts, which can twist and cause unbearable pain, or a blood clot from taking the pill for so long at such a young age. Still, you can't shift your backside to get her medical attention. She's having period pain, but you wait until after her period for her to be examined. Stop wasting time and take care of your daughter, who is suffering. Shame on you. I, 37 male, and my wife, 31, live in a suburban area. I commute to work in a nearby city every day, and she stays at home. We have no children. My commute is generally about two hours. I can shorten this by 10 to 20 minutes with some good timing and luck, but it's a long commute for the most part. 
Now, what has often been a source of friction in my marriage is that nine times out of ten, the moment I step in the door, my wife asks me to do something. She always has some miscellaneous chore that cannot wait. She wants me to take out the trash, make dinner, wash some dishes or whatever else. I've told her repeatedly that I need some time to unwind from work and then I'll happily do it. Last Thursday, after I asked her for time to relax, she said I had two hours to relax after work. She insisted my commute home was plenty of time to listen to music and unwind. When I explained that driving in traffic was probably more nerve-wracking than work, she said I was sitting on my butt. This Monday, I woke her up and said I had a special surprise for her. She assumed that I'd taken the day off work and we were going somewhere special. She got dressed and we got in my car. I got to the freeway where I told her we would spend the next two hours sitting in traffic together, seeing as she considers that leisure. She immediately got upset at me for lying to her. We argued for about 20 minutes until she stopped responding. Then she started watching Netflix on her phone. Then she asked me to drop her off somewhere so she could Uber home. I did not. We got to my office building and she immediately jumped out of the car to find something to do. I went to work as usual but she was nowhere to be seen after I finished and not answering texts. Finally, I called her, and she picked up the phone to tell me she'd taken an Uber home in the afternoon, then hung up on me. Since I did this, she hasn't said more than a word or two to me at a time. She seems upset, but did I take this too far? You are the idiot. Your escalation is terrifying. Your wife was annoying, but you lied and tricked her into your car where you didn't let her out when she asked. That's horrible and her wrongdoings were immediately outweighed by your need to be right when you did that. If she was my friend and she told me this story, I would beg her to leave you. Everyone's the idiot here. So almost every day you arrive, an urgent chore needs to be done, yet you wrote that your wife stays at home. So does she work from home or what is she doing all day that she can't do the chores herself? Even so, what did you expect when you basically lied to her and refused to let her leave the car? Did you think she was going to wait in the car till you were done with your work after that? What even made you think this was the best way to solve this? You should talk about what you expect from each other in this relationship. Taking out trash should be fine, but having to make dinner right away is excessive. What a horrible life you all have. The whole thing seems immature and awful. Dude, that's a whole realm beyond taking it too far. I divorced someone for this. Honestly, just move. I don't care how much you love your quaint little ex-herb, there has to be a job closer that's basically the same. Disagree, OP's not the idiot. When I explained that driving in traffic was probably more nerve-wracking than work, she said I was just sitting on my butt. I've never read a comment that was so disconnected from reality. You two need to sort this out as your wife's outrageous behaviour can potentially ruin your marriage. She is 1000% wrong. On a side note, I'm not sure she learned a lesson. After all, she was able to take an Uber home. A more fitting lesson would have been to make her drive, both ways, and make sure that she leaves her cell phone at home all day. It's not safe to use a cell phone in the car anyway, so she would have driven you to work, waited for you all day without her cell phone, and then drive you home. And as soon as you two walk in the house, you should have demanded that she cook dinner for you right damn now and enforce it. Only then might she have gotten the message. Or maybe not. I, female 19, have an older sister, 30. She has three kids, female tween, young male child and male kindergartner. I have to babysit a lot for my sister as she's a single mom. She's also disabled and has to go to many doctor appointments and treatment sessions at the hospital. Recently, I was babysitting while my sister was at a hospital appointment. My niece, who we'll call Sky, was getting really angry as her younger brothers kept asking if they could go play games on her phone even though she told them no. I told them to stop bugging her or they'd go in time out and got them to go do something else. Around an hour later, they started bugging Sky again and she lost her temper and started screaming at them and said if they didn't stop asking to play on her phone, she'd break it. They thought it was really funny and kept pestering her. I tried to calm Sky down but she threw the phone out of the window while we were on the second floor of the house. The phone was broken, I explained what had happened when my sister got home. She's now upset with me and said I should have stopped Sky from breaking the phone. She's now asking that I pay to replace the phone as it was expensive and thinks I could have prevented it from getting broken but didn't. I think my sister is being unfair and I shouldn't have to pay to replace the phone. Not the idiot, if she's old enough to have a cell phone, she's old enough to have consequences for intentionally breaking it. You tried to calm her and she didn't listen. 
It's not your fault. As a parent, if my kids were in that situation and one deliberately broke their phone, it would clearly be the child's fault, not yours. You did a good job trying to de-escalate the situation. Sky would no longer be allowed a phone if I were her mom, as she's not acting mature enough to take care of one. I do wonder if it was at all helpful to try to calm her when OP could have tried to get the boys to stop. The kid acted irrationally because she was cornered. OP sat back and let it play out. I still say they're not responsible for paying for a new one, but damn, why were those kids never actually put in time out? Why was that an empty threat? Agree. OP's the idiot. I want to make sure I understand something. You, an adult, watched as the boys repeatedly harassed their sister and basically did nothing to stop them. I mean, yeah, you distracted them the first time, but you said that they found her threat funny and intentionally kept harassing her, and you didn't stop them. Why didn't you take the phone away? Why didn't you put the boys in timeout the second time? Why did you let them harass another child?